We're going to talk about the employee task list. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what all these options are here on the task list and how we can sort. First thing is, let's say our task list is closed. We don't know how to get to it. There's a couple ways you could do it. First one is you can go to task info, task list. The other one, if you have a bunch of tabs open and you want to just close them all and just be brought back to the front as if uh, the software was just signed into, just click the home button. It closes every tab and brings you back to the task list. This is our default screen. So at first glance, this is a little overwhelming. There's a lot of options here and there's a lot of colors and there's a lot going on. But it all makes sense here, I think, in just a moment. We're going to start with these colors. First thing is we have red, we have some yellows, and we have some greens going on here on this task list. Now what these stand for, the red is anything that is past due. So any today is 4-4-2017. This task was for yesterday. It was due yesterday. It's showing up in red. So yesterday and before is going to be red. Anything due today is going to be yellow. And anything due in the future is going to be green. We also have these color buttons up here. These work with this. If you want to sort the system and only see all the things that are past due, click the red button. We can also reset. And if we want to see all of maybe today's stuff and we want to get all the other junk out of our face, go ahead and click the yellow button. And the same thing for the green button. I'm going to go through these columns real quick. The first one is a due date. This is the due date that a task is due. And then you're going to notice that each one of these have a number next to the date. And this is what they represent. This task for 4-3 was due yesterday. It is one day past due. The task from 4-1 is three days past due. Today's tasks are not due at all. There you have a zero because they're not past due and they're not in the future. We have some tasks that are two days away and tasks that are three days away. So that's what these little numbers mean. The task number is just that. It is the number that we're tracking for these tasks to keep track of everything. They're blue and underlined. We can double click them to go into the task. We have a section that shows you who the uh, task was entered by, and we have one that shows you who it's assigned to. You can sub-assign a task. Maybe you have a foreman that wants to be assigned, and then you want to sub-assign it. You can do that. However, I think it's just as easy just to reselect whoever you want to go do the task. You could do that right from the front of this task list. The next column's um, status is something you can use inside of a task. We won't really cover that. It's not important right now, but you can sort by it if needed. We have a parent customer name dropdown and a customer name dropdown. Every one of these fields along the top are used for sorting. If I wanted to see all tasks that were for 1234 Disney Road, I'd just select that from the drop-down. I can then hit reset. Maybe I want to look at all Brazil's tasks. Okay, here they all are. So you can do that with almost anywhere in the software where you see these open blank boxes along the top. You can usually click in them and figure something out to sort by. Maybe I want to sort by a date. I want to see everything for today. I can do that. We also have the task description that shows up here, along with the phone number of the customer to easily get a hold of them if you need to. You can print the task from right here by clicking the print button. This column here is pretty helpful. It tells you if the task has been marked as completed. When tasks come back from the mobile device, they're usually marked as completed. And in fact, we have one here that is. If we hit, we're gonna see that we have a Y right here. And in fact, this task, the writing looks really odd. That's an easy indication. When you see this green writing that's angled, that's your indication that that task is ready to be completed. It's done. We either want to post it to QuickBooks, we either want to create an invoice out of it to post to QuickBooks, or we want to just post it to Notes for History. Um, again, we can sort by the completed column if it's easier, and just find all of our tasks that are completed, go in and finish the work. Once a task is marked as complete, it's really not done. It's on the open task list. Your next move is to go in and either post that task to notes so it's just histor historical, or we invoice it to charge. You'll also see your start and stop times on these tasks, and you're going to see the date they were entered along with task-specific notes. 
So we know that we can sort. We know what these colors represent. We have just a couple more buttons along the top that are useful. This one is a huge one, number of days out. I get a lot of calls from people that they can't see tasks that they've created. The reason why is the number of days out. Yes, the system will always show you the older stuff, but number of days out represents today. So from 4-4-2017, show me three days into the future for tasks. That's what we're seeing right now. If I don't see a task I created and it's more than three days out, I need to change this number to something, something else. Maybe I want to do 45 days or 180 days and then hit enter. You'll see that the task list just grew and it's showing me a couple other dates here that didn't display before. So this number of days out is important. You can change it at any time. Maybe I want to go back to just seeing 14 days or maybe just seven days. You can do that. Now, if you're really not sure if your number of days out encompasses a task, you can hit show all. This will force the system to show every task and ignore the number of days out. It'll show us everything, whether it's assigned to us or not. The reschedule button is made for mass rescheduling. If you click that, you can put in an existing user and date and then tell it the new date or user you want to assign for and then hit reschedule. It will move every task for a certain date or a certain user to another person or another date. We have a map button. If you click it, it opens up mapping. We have an email customers button. If you click it, it's asking to mass email a set of customers for just one specific date. The caveat is, of course, the customer must have a valid email address within their detail. You can then fill this out and hit email. It'll email them. It's kind of a good way to let your customer know a heads up. Maybe there's a bad storm and you're not going to do any more work today. You can shoot out the emails, let them know that you're not able to do that work, and you'll be back in touch tomorrow. We can click the print button, and from this list, there is a lot of options. So feel free to play around with this. You're not going to hurt anything. This one is your tasks that are still open. Then we can do uh, searches via customer for certain tasks, and we can search closed tasks. But again, there's a lot of options here. I'm not going to cover them in this video. From here, we have the reset button, which resets any sorting that we've done that's special. And we have the close button if we want to close this list. That is the employee task list, how it works, and what all this represents.